Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for this program of the Venezuelan American Association of the U.S., also known as VAUS. I am Michael Skoll, president of VAUS. I would like to welcome all of you to today's conversation about the new Venezuelan organization, MCVM, and with two of its officers, Umberto Calderon Berti and Vladimiro Mujica. We are grateful to Umberto and Vladimiro for taking their time to be with us and participate in this discussion. And we are also grateful to our past president, Ana Julia Hatar, for her key role in proposing and organizing this event. We are also grateful for your participation today and your support of VAUS in these very difficult times for Venezuela. The Venezuelan American Association has been promoting exchange between Venezuela and the US for 87 years. But today, we are clearly an organization joined in the fight for a return to democracy, decency, and human rights in Venezuela. Today, we feature a, a new group, the Movement for Venezuelan Citizens in the World, charting a new course in that fight. Speaker Speaking will be Umberto Calderon Berti, president of the group, and Vladimiro Mujica, a member of its executive committee. Uh, you have read their bios, but let me uh, give you some highlights. Umberto has been a distinguished leader in government and the oil industry, including as Minister of Energy and Mines and of Foreign Relations, President of Petróleos de Venezuela, and on and on. Vladimiro is a scientist, researcher, and lead leader in the energy industry. One of his several roles was as chairman of the Venezuelan National Commission for Oil Research. He has taught at universities in Venezuela, Israel, Brazil, France, and the US, among others. He is currently full professor at the School of Molecular Sciences at Arizona State University. We will begin our, our conversation shortly. Please note that you may ask a question of our speakers by clicking the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and, and writing it down. We will get to as many as we can. We ask media representatives attending to give credit to VAUS, as well as to the speakers, of course, in any coverage of this program. Okay. A pleasure now to talk with an old friend, Umberto Calderon Berti, and a newer one, Vladimiro Mujica. They are leading an effort toward a goal which many believe is improbable, the gathering of Venezuelan exiles worldwide in a primary to select an opposition candidate for president of Venezuela. This in the face of the Maduro criminal dictatorship which has made clear that it will not tolerate any attempt at genuine electoral democracy and has ba banned the leading candidate of the opposition, Maria Corina Machado. The primary is supposed to take place October 22nd, but no one knows for certain what will happen then and following. Now, let me start with Vladimiro. Vladimiro, what is the Movimiento de Ciudadanos Venezolanos en el Mundo? the Movement for Venezuelan Citizens in the World, MCVM, to you. Well, uh, Michael, before answering that question, I, I would like, I, I know that Umberto will join me in that, but I would like to, to thank the Venezuelan American Association of the United States for giving us this opportunity to participate in this webinar and discuss about our organization and exchange point of view with you. I see that Ana Julia Hadar just uh, joined uh, the, the webinar too. And as you mentioned, well, she's Venezuelan. She was also the, the president of this association in the past. So we are really very pleased for this opportunity. And, and this is particularly important because the, the Venezuelan case, let's put it that way, and uh, the, the lack of democracy, I mean, we, we are, we do have an authoritarian government for sure. Sometimes people hesitate whether to call it straightforward, you know, dictatorship, but it is certainly an authoritarian government. The only hesitation has to do with the origin of all this chain of governance, because initially it was a democratic selection a democratic election in Venezuela, the, the, the first time Chavez was elected. But we need to understand that all this process uh, degenerated in what we have now. 
But back to your question. The Movimiento Ciudadano Venezolano en el Mundo, the, the translation, the citizen movement of Venezuelans in the world, it's an organization that we created, founded a um, little bit more than a year ago. And the, the idea was that uh, we, we concluded that uh, even though there were many Venezuelan associations, Casa de Venezuela, many organizations that were devoted primarily to the humanitarian support of Venezuelans around the world, we, we didn't have an organization that uh, was center of action was political activism, citizenship activism. So we decided to, to create one that had that uh, purpose as its focus. And uh, we, we tried to do that respecting and recognizing the effort of many other organizations. I mean, we, we are not trying to, to, to assert or, or, or take over the, the Venezuelan representation of the diaspora, but on the contrary, to, to form alliances and work with some of the organizations on this. But it is clear that we have a, a focus in that direction. That goes without saying that we, all, we are also very much concerned about the, the humanitarian aspect and everything having to do with the, with the status of our uh, well, Venezuelans all over all over the country, all over the world. And particularly in the US, I mean, we, we, we support everything that has been done in trying to, to get the, the, the government of the US to come up with these ideas about the TPS or, or the humanitarian parole or any other initiative that works in that direction. But that said, we have concentrated on what we might call political or citizenship activism to distinguish it from, from political party because we are, we are not a political party at all. We, we welcome people from, from, you know, from any, uh, regardless of their political inclination. Now, you mentioned also the, this event in Venezuela, the, the primary election, the, the election of the opposition candidate. We have been very active on that, but at the same time, we want to convey the, the message that this is not our only activity. We, are, we, we don't have that horizon, this short horizon of activity. We are not devoted exclusively to that. We understand the paramount importance of this event and we are participating very actively on that. But at the same time, we, we have been preparing uh, or we are in the process of preparing a, an a international event of the diaspora to discuss how we can really participate and, and, and help our brothers, our citizens that are spread for all the, all the planet. Uh, <laughs> it is important to say, when we say spread over the world, we are talking about now about 8 million people. So the Venezuelan diaspora is probably well, it's one of the largest, probably comparable in, in, in percentage only to the, to the Syrian recently, or some countries in Africa, but it's a huge phenomenon, a demographic phenomenon, and it has a profound influence in Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, Argentina, Chile, Mexico, Spain, and of course, the United States. And in the particular case of the United States, we saw very recently uh, what uh, Secretary Mallorca said about uh, deporting Venezuelans to, to Venezuela, Venezuelans illegally in the US. So, so, so this is a problem. And, and this is a problem that we, we understand the, the position of the American government, but at the same time, we, well, it's, it's a complicated issue, but we regret some of the, of the ways in which this has been done. But probably I, I took too much space in answering your question about what was the, the movement. Okay, so I said, what is the movement and many other things. So probably you have some other question. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm sure we will be hearing more about uh, the organization, even after the primaries and, and, and what have you. I much, much appreciate that. Let me turn to, uh, to Umberto now. Uh, what just, just one thing before you turn to, to yep. Umberto, uh, uh, Michael, um, I forgot to mention that we have several chapters. We have a chapter in, in Mexico, we have another in Chile, 
another in Spain where Humberto is, um, another in Colombia, uh, Mexico, as I mentioned, and we are in the process of expanding all this. So just wanted to uh, do you, mention. Do you have, do you have a, a, a pamphlet, a, a, a written explanation of what MCVM is that we, oh, we distribute to people? We do, we do. Um, na, na, Ana Julia is there, so probably we can uh, trust her for taking. Okay. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, we can certainly send it. To us, it. We can send it around. Absolutely, because, we have we have so, websites. We have one of the media. one of the many things you deserve is more publicity. Everything we we have everything that you know to to support the information about our organization. Yes, we do. Okay, now your turn, Umberto. What? Yeah. Is the context of uh, of this effort? Tell us more about uh, your view of today's collapsed, and if I may use the word, corrupt Venezuela and its electoral possibilities. <laughs> it's really a disaster, Ambassador. Thank you very much, my friend Ambassador Spall and the rest of the people of Baus for this very cordial invitation. Uh, uh, this is some weeks ago, uh, some senators from the uh, Democratic Party and the Republican Party, sent a letter to uh, uh, Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken. They said, just a paragraph, the Venezuelan people cannot afford to see another fraudulent election, which will only bring further suffering to the nation and foment greater instability in the, in, in the Americas. The situation of Venezuela is real dramatic. This, uh, the country has been destroyed. The regime is against, in war against all the institutions of the country. There is no separation, uh, uh, separation of, of, of power. They control the executive, the legislative, the justice, the electoral power. They control everything. But who, uh, one additional thing, most of the people don't know is that is this, it is a real uh, military regime. Fifty percent of the ministers are military, active ministers, and and they control all the sectors of the country. They have destroyed the country. Venezuela was a, a unique country in America Latina. We were growing six uh, percent per year, almost fifty years. We receive people from Europe after the war. We receive people from all the countries in South America. We receive pro people all around the world because Venezuela was growing. Venezuela was progressing. Venezuela was reaching a, a very good stability during, mainly during the democracy. And we provide the people jobs and opportunities. Of course, behind all of this was the oil. Venezuela was very poor at the beginning of last century. And the oil transformed the country in a very more, a, a very modern and, 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 and a strong country by, by the terms in Latin America. Uh, we didn't have roads, schools, hospital, uh, 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 electricity. We don't have, we didn't have anything in the, in the Venezuela before the oil. And with the oil appear, uh, mainly during the sec after the Second World War, the country totally changed. We established thousands of schools, roads around the country, electricity. We covered 97% of the country with electricity, electricity. We transformed the country and we gave opportunities to the people to go to start to, to, to the schools. We have a very strong uh, middle class, which is fundamental for the countries. And, con and people coming from all the, the world found opportunities in our country to progress and to have a family. And everything has been destroyed. Venezuela now is a mess. The oil industry, when the Chavez came to power, we were producing 3.3 million barrels per day. Today, it reached only uh, 700,000 barrels per day. 300 go to, to China to pay the debt, 100 to Cuba, and the rest to cover the internal market and to leave, to live more or less to live for the people. They are living with Chevron uh, payments, actually, really. And the, all, all the industry, which was uh, the most important industry around uh, in, in America Latina, one of, one of the most important in oil industry in the world was totally destroyed. 
You know, we had in Venezuela uh, uh, 1.2 million barrels per day of refining capacity. Today, 250,000 barrels per day. We had uh, uh, abroad in Europe and mainly the United States 16 refineries. We only have three in the United States, and we have 1.7 million barrels per day. Uh, 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 refining capacity ab ab abroad. We don't have now, we have now only 700,000 barrels per day. And one which is very important is a permanent violation of the human rights of the people. 300 prisoners, civils and militars. 8 million people uh, outside. And the, the elections, if there is no clean election, uh, very clean elections and just elections, won't solve the problem. Why? Because they are going, they are not going to change. We need a new government in Venezuela. Why? Behold, because they have been applying communist formulas during the last 23 years. They destroy not only the oil industry, they destroy the, the agricultural sector, the industrial sector, the electricity. Most of the country has three to five to seven hours per day without electricity. We have to rebuild the country. And that seems a very good opportunity for everybody. And the center of the recovery of the country should be the oil. We progress because of the oil. We transform in Venezuela because of the oil, and we have to recover the country using, using the, 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 the uh, oil as instrument. We can, we have, to, we have to open the country to the foreign invest, investment, private invest, investment, public, uh, uh, international, and, uh, and nationals, because the opportunities are there. The opportunities for, for the uh, service company, the opportunities, opportunities for, the, for the electricity companies. Almost 100% of the thermoelectrical production is destroyed in Venezuela. We have to rebuild that. All the transmission are destroyed, lines are destroyed. Uh, the, the industrial uh, sector is destroyed. We had before important 12,000 uh, uh, industries in Venezuela, we now have 5,000 producing almost 20% of their capacity. And then the, we have to build the roads again to repair the, the ports, the airports, and the opportunities are there. But it's fundamental to have a new government which respects the human rights, democratic country with new formulas. We have to abandon for, forever the statism. We were growing in Venezuela and we made a tremendous mistake because we used a substantial part of the income of the country provided by the oil to be invested in, uh, as a state, uh, in state companies. And all of them were a total disaster. They, they didn't produce any result, positive result for the country. And the money which we use for education, for health, for, for the services, and for, for the, the, the security was used to cover the losses of those companies. And those companies now are all, the, all destroy, destroyed. We have to privatize all the country, and mainly we have to open uh, the activity, the oil, the oil sector to the private sec, uh, to the private investor. All the, 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 in the, all the chain of value, in all the chain of value, in exploration, production, refining, all the activities, we cannot build, re rebuild the industry without the, the support. We cannot, of, of the foreign investors. We cannot rebuild the country without the support of the foreign investors. And we have to change the policies. And this is a, a, a thing where the majority of the country agree that we have to forget about this, the, uh, the, uh, the state as an investor and concentrate the, the state in education, health, uh, 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 services and the security of the of the of the of the of the country. You know, uh, the country actually is totally controlled by the mafias, the drugs, the guerrilla. Isbola is there. This is very dangerous. You know, Isbola is not fifteen thousand kilometers ahead uh, 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 of the United States. One thousand kilometers miles uh, 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 in, uh, of the United States. They use Venezuela as a platform to spread the international terrorists, Islamic terrorists around all America Latina. And you see how what has been the reaction in Colombia, in Bolivia, in some of the countries in America Latina, because they are there. Chavez provide them the platform to spread 
the Islamic uh, terrorism in, in America Latina. This is a very dangerous situation. And the security of the country, of Venezuela, is the security of the region, not because of the resources we have. We can increase the production of oil. We can become, again, a source of, pro of supply and a reliable uh, source of supply to the United States, as we were in the past. We supply most of the imports of the United States during the war. We supply uh, most of the imports of the United States during many years. And the only time Venezuela has used the oil as a weapon to blackmail the countries with, with the oil, as I mentioned uh, uh, before. And we want to, re, uh, to become, again, uh, 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 reliable source of supply to oil to the United States, States to the hemisphere, and to all the countries without using the oil as a weapon. But we need the, the, the support of the international community. The results of the election will depend on three factors. First, to have the popular support internally. Maria Corina Machado has it. Second, we need support of the international community. No, it, with the election, in, elections are not enough we need clean election, just election, transparent elections. We need to change the government. As far as Maduro remains in power in Venezuela, he's going to be a, 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 a permanent and, and instability in the, in the re region. And of course, we will need the support of the ar army forces in Venezuela uh, to, to, uh, to give governability and stability at the, for the first government after the, 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 the elections. Uh, I think uh, I know that I, and um, I would bet everyone listening in on this agrees with your, um, your description of Venezuela and your hopes for um, an electoral change and a, um, a replacement uh, of, um, of Maduro. But uh, the question now, sadly, uh, is um, is how much stronger Maduro has become over the last two or three years. Uh, the Colombian, Mexican, and Brazilian governments have sh shifted uh, to supporting Maduro uh, more than they ever have before. Uh, the Biden administration, tragically, has chosen the flow of oil over democracy and human rights in Venezuela, um, ignoring the fact that the, Venezuela right now doesn't have much oil to send to the United States anyway. You have China, Russia, Iran, Cuba, um, international criminal terrorist groups, which you've mentioned, are operating ever more freely there. And uh, most of the Western world is now focused on Ukraine or China or now Israel. Uh, Venezuela seems uh, 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 an afterthought. Um, can uh, is there a real possibility for a free and open election? Uh, because we know that if there were a free election, Maria Corina Machado would win. So why is it that you think that the Maduro regime will um, will allow this to um, uh, to to happen? Uh, can your primary successfully operate worldwide despite interference from the uh, from the regime? What they want, they are they are looking for the suspension of the sanctions, right. and that cannot be done. It cannot be done unless they give something in, a, 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 as a change. Free the, the the political prisoners, military and civils. Open the country to the people to come back. Good uh, free elections, transparent elections. That, those are the conditions and respect the results of the elections. Venezuela has the resources, have the resource, has the resources, but we need another another government. With Maduro, the instability will continue, Ambassador. It, the situation won't change. If they make uh, uh, the results at the uh, at the end, is that to lift the sanctions, they will have half money. Now, Brazil is not in situation to help Venezuela. Chavez used the resources from oil to buy solid. solid Darities in Latin America, in the world, in, in the Caribbean, and even in the Middle East. Now they don't have it. That's the, why they are going to. They, they are looking for for lifting the sanctions because they, they the only money they are receiving now is Chevron Sports. But and the history, but wait wait you know the history of um, 
uh, uh, negotiations about sanctions, whether you're talking about um, Venezuela or frankly about uh, Iran, is that um, the other side, Iran or Venezuela, um, promises certain things. Sanctions are loosened, but but the promises are not are not kept. That's that's what what I worry about. Is it is it how realistic is it? Um, unless you ha you have something in change, if you don't give it for free, situation won't change. They are very short of money. The stability of the government depends of the money, and they don't have money. They, they in this in this moment they don't pay the salary. They don't pay the the pension. They don't pay the the, the, the military, they don't pay the police because they don't have money and they need the money. That's why they are looking to release the sanctions. And the United States shouldn't release the sanctions unless they give something uh, as a, as a, as a, como contraprestación. Something, something positive and Counter something weight. that can't be reversed. Yes. Yeah. I, I want, can I, can I add something yes. to what Humberto, you said? Because Ambassador, you, you mentioned so what are the odds of really getting this election and all these things that the opposition is hoping for? And of course, we, we, are, we need the international help, but we are not relying exclusively on the international help because this is a problem that we Venezuelans need to, to sort out. But the, the truth of the matter is that we cannot solve it by ourselves because the international forces acting around Venezuela or in the context of Venezuela, Humberto mentioned some of them. You have uh, Iran and Russia and Cuba and Nicaragua and the Colombian guerrillas uh, and some of the terrorist organization, organizations. Um, we cannot control that by, by ourselves. I mean, the, the, the country doesn't, the, the, the people of that, the, this country doesn't have the strength to do this. But we have been trying to do our part. I mean, this exercise, this, uh, this primary elections, the, the purpose of this is not, I mean, this is not a, a poetic adventure, if I may say so, of the, of the people that we want free elections. We are trying to force the government. If they want to suspend the elections, they, they just let them suspend the elections and the, the, and the primaries because we have the strength to, to exert, you know, to oppose these actions. But we need to do this in a strategically unified way. And we have to admit that Venezuelan opposition has not, been, has not been very successful in doing that. Now we have a new opportunity because there is a candidate that is really gathering momentum and it's really gathering strength. And this is going to continue, Maria Corina Machado, and this is going to continue regardless of whether the, 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 the primaries are there or not, because he has been transformed into a social event. It's not just a political event. So now what comes after this? It's difficult to say, but we, we, we need still the international community and we need the international community in a, in a way with a, with a well-defined strategy. We have seen up and down of the US, Europe, Spain. So that's a problem. And the, 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 the other thing that I wanted to mention is you said Colombia, Brazil, Chile, I don't think it's a good idea to put all these countries in a single block because there are internal realities, political realities that are very specific. In the case of Chile, for instance, they tried to approve a constitution and they failed. So now the Boric's government, they have to do something else. In the case of Colombia, Colombia is not a military government as the Venezuelan government and they cannot, it is true that Petro supported uh, the action of uh, Hamas and all that. Yes, but they don't have the whole support. So, so, so they have a very complicated situation. And the same is true in Mexico. The Mexican government, even though the, 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 the worst possible prognosis was done when, uh, when uh, Lopez Obrador got to power, he hasn't been able to, to do what he wanted to do. So we need to play with these differences and we need to play with what we call the pink block to differentiate it for the red block in, in uh, that is Nicaragua, Cuba, and, and Venezuela. Well, that, uh, I just wanted to... Sure, Ambassador, let me to say something. What is sure is that uh, the 8 million Venezuelans now in, in the world as uh, uh, immigra uh, immigrants will be converted into 10 millions. The pressure on Colombia, when I was there as ambassador, 
we had 1.5. Now we ha they have 3 million people. Colombia, Ecuador, Peru. And you see the problems you are having in the, the southern part of the United States with the Venezuelan going through Darien. And, and the problem will, will, won't have any solution because they won't change their mentality. They won't change the, police, the policies. They are communists and they will insist in the same policies and they want to control the people. If you want to work, you have to be with me. You want to eat, you have to be with me. The social control of the country is what they want. And the only opportunity for the Venezuelans and for, the, uh, and for America and for the world is to have a democratic country, a, a government in Venezuela with different ma uh, manner to, 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 to handle the, the country and to, to handle the situation. Well, I, I certainly agree with that. Uh, let me quote something that Vladimiro uh, has written. Uh, he wrote that the worst scenario for the opposition forces is not that the primary fails, but that it is a weak exercise with diminished participation. Uh, in other words, a kind of gift for Maduro. Is this diaspora, those 8 million uh, Venezuelans, are they, are they re prepared and able to participate now, uh, 10 days from now in this, uh, uh, in this, is th this primary? Is the apparatus uh, um, uh, operational, Colombia, US, Ecuador? Yeah. Peru? So, okay, if I may, the situation is like this now. We have a little bit more than 400,000 Venezuelans living in the in the diaspora who would be able to participate in the primaries because of the regulations that the, the National Commission for Primary Elections established. So they started with the original uh, register, voters register. So bottom line is that it's a bit more than 400,000 people. Now, we are prepared and I say we are prepared our, our movement and some other organization. We are prepared to transform that and we have suggest, you have been suggesting that from the very beginning into an exercise where many more Venezuelans who are not registered in, the, in this original national register for voters that they, that they use to participate if we can do it electronically or via digital uh, election. And this is possible, even with a short time, perhaps, perhaps an extension will be needed. But, but at this point, the, the crucial event is whether the primaries will take place in Venezuela or not. If they do not take place in Venezuela because either because they collapse because of internal differences of the opposition that lead to a weak election or because the, the government actually suspends the act because they use the, the Supreme Court to do that. In that circumstance, we, what we are trying to, to say is to use the voice of the diaspora as a voice of the Venezuelan people. So we will say, the government is preventing you from speaking. So we will open a way for you to, to do that. And we are prepared in quotation marks because it needs a lot of work, but uh, technically it can be done. And perhaps we will need to change a few things that I'm not uh, at liberty to, to, to say here. But we will cert we have been certainly talking a lot. Umberto has participated in that, and Ana Julia and myself, in in preparing this possibility with the help of some technology experts that will allow us to to put together a platform for voting and consulting of the Venezuelan or the Venezuelan diaspora. Okay, what, what, what the people? What, excuse what me, Amazon. Uh, some people may may imagine that uh, that uh, four hundred thousand people is too too small. You know, in Spain, we had elections recently, national elections. Two and a half million Spanish uh, people were supposed to vote and vote only 250,000 for the national elections. Uh, and what's the problem? That the Venezuelan, most of the Venezuelan abroad are very poor. They need to work. They need to work every day just to live because there are, there are no any way for them. And that's the reason politics for them is a secondary problem for them. The, the real problem is to survive and they have to, to work for that. But, but if we, we uh, uh, get uh, 400,000 people voting abroad, that would be a successful situation for us. Ana Julia, you have a comment. Yes, I just have a very short comment. Um, 
I think that we need to um, uh, get an idea of how difficult this um, primary process has been for most Venezuelans. Uh, first of all, the platform hasn't been easy to follow. Second of all, the government has been also blockading the uh, participations of Venezuelans in Venezuela to the point that now they have to find a new IPN uh, because the, the government has block, uh, blockade uh, the possibility for Venezuelans to participate in Venezuela. And furthermore, I think there is something very important here. The government for the past year or so has been impeding Venezuelans to register in the uh, national um, electoral system. So there, there is a, a, a number that may be around 10 million Venezuelans, especially young Venezuelans, that have uh, reached the age of 18 in the past couple of years, haven't been able to register because the government decided simply to close this, the, uh, the electoral um, council, uh, trying again to uh, uh, put a stop to the primaries. I think that they never thought the primary was going to have this emotion and this uh, sort of tsunami effect um, in the minds of Venezuelans, and they are trying to stop it. Um, but never forget that there are 10 million Venezuelans out there that would have liked to participate, and they haven't been able because the government has blockaded uh, the uh, possibility of registration. I think it's important. Thank you. What what more do you need in terms of uh, letting people know, especially obviously the the, the diaspora, the Venezuelans? Uh, is the media uh, repeating this kind of thing? I, I have to admit, I didn't see any notice in the uh, the New York Times um, uh, about this. Uh, if and when I read the uh, New York Times these days, uh, what, what more do you need uh, to um, uh, uh, get the word out to uh, to uh, Venezuelans in the diaspora? Is your, are your committees doing the job? You know, the United States should realize that the situation in Venezuela is very dangerous for their own security. When Chavez came to government in 1999, the first, one of the first things he did was to expel the American companies from Venezuela. He wanted to, to keep them out of the radar of the United States, to keep the country out of the radar of the, of the United States. And they brought Russians, Chinese, Iranians, to produce oil. Do you know how much oil they are producing now? Zero. They brought all these countries for political reasons. The Russians to bother the United States, the Chinese to do their business and to, to be in the region, and the Iranians to spread the Islamic revolution in America Latina and to, to be a very dangerous uh, uh, threat for the United States. I can imagine the United States having uh, um, uh, Iranian uh, bases in, in, in Venezuela or Russia. You know, they, uh, Chavez proposed the Russians to have uh, uh, bases in Venezuela, and they started uh, trying to establish a submarine uh, base in, in, the, in one of, of our islands. Thanks to the effort of the militaries in Venezuela, they didn't allow that. But Chavez was looking for that to have a, 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 Soviet, a, a Russian basis in Venezuela, like Cuba, yeah. you know? Yeah, uh, uh, is it difficult to understand why a very poor country, small island like Cuba, is it dominant in the country? They control everything. The security forces are in hand of the Cubans. The communication are in hands of the Cuba. The regist registration, all the uh, uh, operation are in hands of the, of the Cubans. They control everything and, and, the, and the intelligence services are, in, uh, are under control of the Cubans, then they have a permanent threat uh, against the Venezuelan people. That's why to solve the Venezuelan problem, you have to solve at the same time the Cuban problem. You are going to have a permanent threat to the United States if Cuba and the Venezuelan government remain in power. Okay, um, let's go to the questions and a reminder, that if you have a question, click the Q and A button and write your question down. Um, um, yeah, I, well, I, I, mean, have, I see that you've already written answers to a couple. Of I have questions. been answering all the questions. Yes. Yeah, but 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 uh, we'd like to have everyone else see what you have to say. You oh uh, well, then in such a case, 
from Ava uh, Santos, and, and if you could just give us a, a, a brief um, um, a summary of what you said oh, to Ava Santos and Martin Schubert. Yeah, sure. Let me let me just uh, uh, wait a second here. You don't have to read it. Just just ge general. Well, no, ju just what, let, me, let me just uh, wait, 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 wait. Um, yeah. Okay. So essentially, well, there was a question about uh, uh, whether the U.S. should relax sanctions, and I just wrote that Umberto already answered this question live. Then there was a question about how much influence does Iran have in Venezuela. I said Iran's influence has increased dramatically since the time of Chavez government. Iran and Venezuela have secret commercial and oil related agreements and the presence of Iranian extremist groups, groups in the island of Margarita and in the mines of the Orinoco River region is well documented. Eva Santos uh, asked, uh, please remember to denounce what is going on with the newspaper and all the media. And I answer, Eva, you are absolutely right. The control of the media is one of the main tools of social and political control all of the Maduro regime in Venezuela. Um, Carlos Sanchez said, if the primary in Venezuela is canceled by the regime, the 400,000 registered voters in the diaspora can vote with the manual process that is being organized at this moment and give a message to the world. And then I reply, Carlos, you are absolutely right. That's exactly what we are proposing to do it, and enhance that visibility and that protest are opening up a hybrid mechanism so that in addition to being able to vote manually and presentially, they will be able to, to vote using a digital platform. So that's the, the summary, Ambassador. Okay. I'm sorry they disappeared from, but they, they, they were just <laughs> hidden there in a box. Uh, here's another question from Martin Schubert. Uh, the US strategic oil stockpile has been de depleted by the Biden government. How would an opposition Venezuelan government, that is opposition Venezuelan government, feel about a resumption of PL 480 to restore the stockpile against purchase of agricultural commodities? Well, it could be, it can be done, but it's not the solution. The solution is to have Venezuela fully produ production again, back again. We can produce more than 3 million barrels per day. And we can supply the United States it's only one week of, of, of three or four days of transportation instead of 45 days to China and, and, and India. It's a natural market, the United States. Um, you have to favor the change in Venezuela. It's the only way you can, we can uh, 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 produce the oil in the Orinoco Petroleum Belt. We have one of the most important uh, resources of oil in the world. The Orinoco Petroleum Belt is there. You can produce from there. We have the, the, the continental shelf. We have touched one single molecule, molecule of, of, of gas from the continental shelf. We have a gas in, the, in front of Paria. We have gas in front of the Orinoco uh, Delta. We have gas in, 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 in Maracaibo Lake. We can export, you know, the petrochemical plants. We, are, we were producing before, Ambassador, 7 billion. Uh, 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 cubic feet per day, seven billion cubic feet per day. Today we are producing three billions. Two billions are being flared every day, flared, and the country is consuming only one billion. And all the petrochemical plants are stopped; they are not producing. All the the, the the gas provided to the to homes or to industry in Venezuela have been stopped because they they don't they are not able even to to gather that oil, that gas, and provide gas to the, to the homes and, 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 and the industries in Venezuela. That's why we insist yeah. that the important thing is to change, to, pro, to, to, to force a change in Venezuela and to be, uh, that Venezuela become a, 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 a real uh, a provider of oil to the United States and the Western Hemisphere. Well, all yeah. you have to can, do I, with... can, I add, can I add something there, Ambassador? Because I mean, Umberto has mentioned that several times, but really the, the Venezuelan crisis, of course, is very much related to oil and the, the oil industry and the collapse of the oil industry, but it's much more uh, critical than that. And, you know, just to give an indication to people listening to us, the salary of a Venezuelan a university professor is typically $30 per month. And 
I was a professor at the Central University of Venezuela, and, and I mean, it's, for us, it has been an extremely painful experience to see all the universities collapse, uh, faculty leaving the country, students being unable to, to complete their careers. And this is the same for the Central University, Simón Bolívar University, Universidad de Los Andes, Carabó, Zulia, all institutions. Uh, the same for, for hospitals. Uh, you know, it can be a, a, a critical event in, in the life of a Venezuelan to have to go to a, a private uh, clinic for, for health services because it might be 15, and at the time during the COVID pandemic, it was between 15 and $20,000. And you can imagine on that type of salaries, that was the ruin of the, of the family. But more than that, it is, I mean, we need to emphasize that uh, we see all the, 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 the immigration situation. The reason for this is that the Chavez and Maduro governments, they have destroyed the country. So they, they, they are, this is the original cause. And if we want to solve that, we, as Humberto is saying, we need to find a way to replace the government. But I want to mention something that is extremely important now, that we are not talking of displacing the government or replacing the government in a vengeful scheme. Sure. We are talking about justice. We are talking about peace. We are talking, and the key word is, we are talking about the re reconciliation of Venezuelans. And this is very important. And at this point, we have been very adamant in trying to push the, the message that the go Venezuelan government is acting against any possibility of reconciliation amongst Venezuelans. And the reason is very simple. They, 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 they see the weakness in popular support. They have some other strength, as you said. They have the military, they have and now a privileged international situation after Ukraine. This is all true, but they don't have people support. And this is the, the, the weakness they don't want to be shown to the world. And this is why they are trying to, to, to bombard, to, to explode, to implode, whatever they want, the strategy they, 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 they can use, all the possibilities of popular expression because they would evidence that they are a minority and a, and a very small minority in the country. And we need to emphasize this because we are not seeking, we're seeking justice, not revenge. And we are, we are trying to put together the country, not separate any furthermore. This but, point is very important, Ambassador, and our friends. You know, it, we want to restore democracy for everybody, including them. We cannot behave like them. We, not, we cannot go against them. We have to guarantee them the space, those who have not uh, uh, go, uh, go through, through uh, violation of uh, human, re, human rights or, or, or looted the country, the rest of the people they have to, we have to offer them the space to, to, to act in democracy. Because if we act like them, we are similar to them and we are different. That's, the, that's why we have insisted with them. They, we are not trapping a, a, anybody. We cannot do it. We need all the country to go to get together, you know, and, and use the space to participate. If they get the support of the people freely, that's different. And, and we have to give them the opportunity to, to, to have this space in, in the political scenario. Well, what, I agree with you completely. And it, it, the argument settles very well on someone basically with a democratic open mind. But the, uh, the question is whether is how this settles on uh, people like Maduro and, and, and others. Uh, what I fear is the, the Cuban pattern. Um, we've been arguing about Cuba and demanding human rights and democracy in Cuba for uh, most of our lifetimes. Yes. Uh, has it happened? Uh, is it going to happen in Nicaragua? I, I don't think so. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. Uh, uh, we're, we are all searching for what will be the key um, to, to changing the mentality. Now, I think um, uh, Umber either you or Umberto or you, Vladimir, said there are certain things you can't talk about. Uh, I hope that what you can't talk about are real things that um, that uh, could really, uh, really happen. I am uh, personally, um, uh, 
on a fence now, believing what what is possible and and what is not possible. Um, uh, let me go back to questions now. This is from Maria Carmelo Rodriguez. If the primary is canceled, which is probable, and only the, the diaspora votes, other than sending a message to the world with our act of voting, what are we going to do with that? Is there a plan for that scenario? Vladimiro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Would, would you like to answer that, um, uh, Ana Julia? It's, well, yeah, I can say something about that, and then probably Ana Julia wants to say something too. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, this question is, of course, very important. I mean, do we have a plan? Well, we we have been trying to talk about uh, the concept of constitutional civil resistance, implying civil resistance to act according to the constitution to defend our right to vote. And it has the implication that if they, the government cancels the right to express for the Venezuelans in Venezuela, we will try to use the diaspora as the voice of all the Venezuelans, not just those in the diaspora. Now, what comes next? Comes next does not depend on the diaspora only. It depends on how the leadership of the opposition behaves in Venezuela. It depends on the whole international perception of what is happening. And when we are saying that we want to, to, to put into to evidence uh, this uh, act of citizenship in all the countries is because we are planning to, to use this as a, as a way to make visible our protests and use this to request further support from, from all countries. And the Venezuelan government, of course, is not very happy with this. Would that change, would that be a definite change on events? I can't predict that. I don't think nobody can predict that. I mean, the, the way these governments, these uh, authoritarian governments collapse, we have the, the Serbian pattern, we have the Peruvian pattern, Chilean, Spain, it's very hard, but we are certainly pushing in that direction. But again, as Humberto emphasized, and I said several times, opening the possibility of reconciliation for the whole country and open the possibility of democracy for the whole country, not uh, trying to install the persecution. Uh, justice, yes, that's a different story. So that would be my answer to Maria Carmela, who's also a friend and a participant in all this fights for freedom. So I don't know what you did, right? Because I interrupted you. I just want to add that um, one of the differences between this primary election and other primary elections is that now uh, we are almost 8 million Venezuelans abroad. And, um, and that is a permanent reminder of the Venezuelan tragedy for our friends and our and our, our Latin American friends. And I just wanted to make a, a comment on this, uh, Mike, because I do think that even though uh, we have some pink countries, as Vladimiro has called them, um, they have been very uh, vocal uh, asking for, for elections in Venezuela. They got there through elections that were internationally monitored. And they just don't want their own people to think that they are going to follow the Venezuelan example. Why? Because the people in Brazil, the people in Colombia, the people in Chile, the people in Peru, and in other Latin American countries uh, are seeing by their own eyes the tragedy of a Venezuela, the, the Venezuelan regime. So these pink governments want to differentiate from the Maduro regime because of their own political interests. And I think that that is something that the US is, is, is um, managing very well in the sense that it's trying to convince these uh, presidents that are more you know, towards uh, defending um, leftist uh, government to say, okay, we don't, we don't ask you anything else. Just go to free, uh, fair and free elections. And if you win, you win, like, like with it and we'll, we'll go with you. So I think, uh, again, that the 8 million Venezuelans abroad, maybe they're not gonna be voting in the primaries, but they will be voting in a, in a presidential election. And I want to 
uh, emphasize that around 20% of the Venezuelans who are in the age to vote cannot vote right now because the government hasn't uh, allowed them to um, uh, participate or to inscribe, how you say, subscribe yes. or <laughs> register, yes. sorry, register in the, uh, in the um, electoral system, which I, I cannot emphasize this enough because without the 20% of the electorate, uh, there is no free and fair elections. So we need to do that first. And uh, we, we have to think about 2024, which by the way, is in our, is in our, our constitution that we should have a presidential election in 2024. To uh, back what Vladimiro just said, that we are not asking for anything else, but to follow the constitution and to have a free and fair election where Venezuelans, all of them that want to vote, will vote in 2024. And I think that the pink countries are going to help us in this. That's my comment. Thank you. Ambassador, your, your microphone, please. Your microphone. I hope, I hope, Ana Julia, that you, um, you talk to Lula personally about this, because that's not the impression I get from what from what he has been saying publicly about Venezuela. I'm afraid we have run out of time for, for questions from participants. I want to give an opportunity to, uh, to uh, Umberto Vladimiro and Ana Julia for, for final comments. Umberto, uh, you can also feel free to talk about the book over your uh, right shoulder, OPEC. Any final <laughs> comments? Uh, yeah, I have a new book, new book this one. It's in Amazon. You can buy there. It's my experience in OPEC as president of, of the organization during uh, some time and being minister of oil during five years. Let me let me tell something at the end, uh, 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 Ambassador. You know, we need the support of the international community. It's basic for us. The government won't change. Don't provide us a free elections unless you make a, a strong uh, pressure on, on them. And we have to convince Lula uh, uh, as uh, uh, Mar Ana Julia said, uh, Petro and Boric, that they, we are looking for the same condition they used to become president of their countries. Vladimiro. Yeah. yeah, well, probably the the comment I want to, to make has to do with a, with, a, with a message that just got on WhatsApp to somebody attending this webinar. I ask him, uh, what do you think? And they say, well, the thing is, it's more about the Venezuelan situation and less about the, the our movement, the MCVM. So what I would just want to mention is that our movement, the Movimiento Ciudadano Venezolano en el Mundo, we are very active and it's not it's not casual that uh, that the two themes are deeply intertwined. I mean, the Venezuelan situation and what we want to achieve. So I want to say that uh, we, we really are, are, are working in the direction of involving the diaspora and everything having to do with citizenship. And even though we are not supposed to, there was no time for further questions. I want to comment on a question there because I think it's very important. Somebody, somebody there asked this question, Donald Fox, about, I'm, it's, a, it's a long question, but essentially what he says is that the Venezuelans were used to the idea that the country would provide for their for the life. It's what we call the, 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 we invented a term for this that it doesn't exist exactly in English, is the, the rentist culture coming from rent. So Venezuelans, we were used to the idea that, that the oil revenues will translate. And then the question Fox is asking is, that didn't help uh, building citizenship. And he's absolutely right. That culture was a menace to democracy. Yes, because people thought that you know the life was guaranteed by 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 God essentially. By has that changed? Well, it has changed the the hard way, because people thought that Chavez was a, 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 a solution to corruption and many other things, and gave this idea, this uh, military group, an opportunity. And the opportunity, if 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 there is ever an example that the remedy was much worse than the disease. This is what we have in Venezuela. No remedy and we have a very a, a deep disease. So we have learned, we have learned 
the very hard way with a lot of misery and death and destruction, but I think we have learned. Okay, Ana Julia. Uh, no, just very briefly because we ran out of time. Please, all, everybody that is listening, help us to have a free and fair election in 2024. That's all Venezuelans are asking. And we really would like to have your support, your help, and also to uh, help us spread the voice that we are not in a revenge here. We just want the constitution to be respected and we just want to elect a new president in 2024. And thank you very, very much for this opportunity. Thank you, thank Mike. You. Thank you. Thank you, Humberto. Thank you, Vladimir. Thank you, Ana Julia. And thanks also to our hardworking association team for making this event possible. Linda Calvet, Lauri Dominguez, and Sebastian Lopez. We are developing more key programs for VALS, and we'll let you know further details soon. By the way, on October 30th, we're going to have a startling uh, example of, of what is wrong with, with Venezuela. It's a, a webinar um, pr uh, with the, the inside crime people on uh, the, the hybrid government of Venezuela right now, which is um, uh, very largely criminal gangs. It's a, it's a it, uh, even I, who, uh, I, th I thought I knew much about Venezuela, was surprised and startled by the, the detail here. So we'll, we'll be doing that on, uh, on, on the 30th. Now, finally, if you're interested in joining uh, the Venezuelan American Association, please contact our team via today's invitation. Your memberships make our work possible. Thank you all for participating today. We look forward to meeting with you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, thank you. Bye-bye.